Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan with one of my personal favorites. It's the Cougar 26 RBS. It's 6,890 pounds as we see it here, so a little under 6,900 pounds. It has about a 2,000 pound cargo capacity on top of that, which means that something like this, if you've got a, a hefty, chunky, really capable half ton, you'll, you'll find this one okay. I think people would probably find it a little more comfortable on a three-quarter ton. That would probably be my general recommendation. But again, a real good heavy half ton, the kind of thing I call like a two-third ton, it would, it would be able to get the job done here. And what I like about this one, like Cougars, maybe it's a couple pounds more than some of the other things. It's like everybody and their brother does this floor plan. So why would you choose a Cougar versus something else? Because it's certainly not the least expensive. It's certainly not the lightest weight. It's because it has so many of those big Cougar fifth wheel feels and functions like we got a king bed we have a warranty for full-time rving on a travel trailer that's just not something you find every day uh it has the a really exceptionally good hot cold camping package at zero to 110 degree rated and i think that hot climate uh capability is a very underrated aspect like everyone's like well is it four seasons is it zero degree rated how about the fact that when it's scorching hot in the summertime when most of us are using the camping this thing excels beyond the capabilities of most any other trailer out there that's the kind of stuff i like carpetless big entertainment monster storage in this thing this camper rocks it rocks tell me i'm wrong this thing's amazing i love it i mean if we're gonna try to be picky yes it's limited on door side windows and the traveling access we can argue is a little janky we're going to talk about more of that inside i'm going to try to be fair i got to rein myself in obviously because <laughs> i like this camper <laughs> and you know what i do the same thing the same video the same way every time this rv comes in i'm changing it up we're going to see where this takes us uh instead of starting by the back i i think you call it living room or bathroom door we're going to start up here by the bedroom. When you wake up in the morning, when the clock gives out a warning, if you don't think you're going to make it on time, don't worry, you'll be saved by the bell. Also, this would be your view right here. Giant windows. Admittedly, they're on the driver's side. I know some people would really prefer those on the, the door side of the RV. I get that. But you can't just flip flop the floor plan because the kitchen would suffer massively, massively. And some manufacturers have, have flipped this floor plan and their, you know, kitchens have suffered dramatically. You might notice that nice big open feeling vaulted ceiling right here. What you're not maybe realizing is Cougars have an all new air conditioning system. Cougar in Montana totally redid their entire uh, AC setup. Um, and you see these little kind of blade vortexy type jobs. The, the ductwork, everything up inside has been completely redone. And what it has yielded is a higher CFM rating, which uh, cubic feet per minute. And in English, what this means, more cold air getting pumped into the RV uh, instead of, you know, just whipping around up in some racetrack ducted system or something like that. Racetrack ducting is cool, but the problem is the cold air stays up in the ducts more often than it wants to come down in the living room. So uh, kudos to Keystone for, I guess, inventing a better mousetrap in a way, you know? Now, I happen to really like the decor here. I hope you do too, because kind of like, uh, you know, the old Ford saying, any color you want as long as it's black, this is how they come. And if you don't like this decor, but you like this layout, give us a call. We've got other things at Halitz with a similar layout and different decors. Now, I'm sitting in the theater seat, giving you the point of view. This is what your camper is going to look like here, straight across from that big 4K Jumbotron. We have added the uh, electric heating fireplace down there, a little titsy toaster, you know, in case you got cold feet, as it were. Uh, we're going to come back to all this storage in just a minute. A couple things I want to point out on the way, though. Up top here. We've got this handy uh, entry light. You can turn it off, you can turn it on, you can put it in motion mode, which I think is very cool. By the way, one is on, zero is off, two is motion. Um, after about 60 seconds of not detecting anything, it'll just shut itself off. And where that's really cool is this is a full viewing window right here. So if you left a light on inside, it would have a nice collection of gnats for you to chew on when you come back to your campsite. The camera does not like it when I do that, by the way. I do it every time just to annoy the camera. That's just how I am. Uh, the in-command system over here is standard on these Cougars. Um, usually default code four zeros. Yep, there we go. So uh, our uh, uh, slides, awning, lighting, and your heating and cooling, plus a bunch of other stuff can be done here. I love the heating and cooling factor because if you're just like sitting there... Um, 
like uh, on the couch and you're too hot or too cold, well, you don't even got to put on pants if you weren't wearing pants on the couch. I guess if you were in bed not wearing pants, that would maybe make uh, a little more sense. I'm going to segue off this because I don't think this is going where I want it to. Um, <coughs> leg room. Yeah, baby. We got plenty of leg room in here. This is a nice, I call it a fluffy, friendly bathroom. That's a big bath space. That's a sealed edge press membrane counter, by the way. You'll find the same thing in the kitchen. And that is not a small counter. That's just a big stainless sink in that thing. Now, all of a sudden here, everybody's doing what Cougar's been doing for a year. Uh, going to a clear shower enclosure with a patterned backsplash to make the uh, the whole thing look and feel a little bit bigger. But it does seem like Cougar kind of set that trend. And it's uh, because it's vaulted in the middle and the way the shower's orientated, especially with that skylight, awesome, awesome headroom. If you're really tall in one of these, you're going to be very, very comfortable, I think. They're very good that way. Now, the, the extra little cabinet like that right there above the uh, the toilet, it really works in this floor plan. I think largely because if you look, that is at the top part of the vaulted ceiling. So it's not like it's going to be a uh, hairy headbanger or anything like that. Um, although, or in my case, a balding headbanger. But it's after that. It's once we start opening up all the storage in here. That is where this one really starts to, to, to take off and kind of uh, come into its own for me. Because this is a layout that like everybody and their brother makes. And everybody and their brother makes a good version of it. I've really not seen a version I'm like, oh, that one's just terrible. But the storage in this, I, I think it's pretty much unrivaled. It's ridiculous. Like you have that huge bonus closet in the back right there. And you already saw a good dedicated pantry space and all those extra just utility drawers. One of those is gonna be a junk drawer. I guarantee that. And some of those being right by the entry door is really handy. But then, you get that giant 4K TV out of the way, and you see we've got a serious pantry tainment storage center going on here. That is above the camp kitchen. That is above the uh, optional fireplace that you're looking at right there. Um, over here, we've got that 12-volt uh, DC compressor fridge. There is also the option for an 8-cubic foot uh, gas electric, whereas this is 10-plus cubic feet. I think it's like it's 10.4, 10.7. I can never remember which brands have exactly which point whatever size, but there you go. Um you know, if so if you're really looking for that serious boondocking functionality, you have the option right there. The kitchen window, I think, is very welcome because this RV absolutely is limited on its campsite window coverage. But down here, you've got a full drawer below an extra large 22-inch oven, one that you can actually cook. I don't know. Um, not, 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 I don't want to say small bird because then you start thinking squab. Oh, man. <laughs> You know, it's crazy to think Americans used to have pigeon in their diet every day. Wow, wow, I got way off topic. Never mind. You can cook a small turkey in that thing instead of a pigeon. There you go. That's what I meant to say. Now, my shoes are holding the uh, uh, door there for the trash can space open. But you see, you've also got plywood drawers down to the floors over there. And if we uh, take a seat over here and close everything up, you see that it actually, I don't know. It's kind of like me. It's a little rough around the edges, but <laughs> it cleans up pretty nice. Now, while I'm sitting here in this theater seat, I, I, I kind of, I want to give a shout out to one of our regular viewers, Mr. Richard Vale, because I'm sitting here in a theater seat and he has long been very vocal about the fact that he prefers a hide-a-bed. Now, see, my wife and I, uh, well, my wife, she prefers a theater seat because the armrest helps keep me from bugging her as much uh kind of like jurassic park um life uh finds a way you know but uh some people like mr richard vale uh they enjoy cuddling a little bit more so they might prefer the standard hide a bed we'll get you know just to let you know there's some different options there now, i wanted to show you that out set of outlets up there because i'm tall and i don't usually see them under the cabinets from my camera point of view but over here some household plugs again next to the usbs but why does that one have a yellow sticker that's because that's part of the Solar Flex uh, inverter prep on uh, these Cougars right here. That is a, uh, a cool thing that, again, Cougars been doing for a while. But if you choose to add an inverter, anytime you see that yellow sticker on an outlet in this camper, it's going to be wired into that inverter loop. Now, uh, again, over here, we're looking at the theater seat option. A hide bed is standard. The dinette we're looking at here is also standard. Um, and there is a table and chairs option. But I like this new dinette they're doing. They're getting better about this. First of all, uh, on the way over, look at the big 
panoramic windows here. But if you do really need to blot out the sun, assuming I can get my fingers up inside there, Cougar's gone uh, over to total blackout nightshades, which is awesome. Now, this is uh, this still, uh, like from last year, is a carpetless slide system. But notice they got rid of the pedestal annoying booth dinette. Instead, now it's just this easy up, uh, down, I kind of call it like a, a dream dinette system. But uh, take it from me, you gotta make sure you put the lock on it, otherwise. Hey, so, you uh, can't be here often. So yeah, make sure you lock it. Now all the lights up here in the uh, top of the slide out, uh, they can just be turned on with that little switch there in the slide box, but that also has just an easy slider dimmer. In the past, they had a dimmer switch, but it was like the Siegfried and Roy salt and pepper, you know, do a magic thumb wave motion, put your finger on it, ah, push it, no, let go. Like it was, it was okay. It just, it just, that's just easier, I guess is what I'm saying. I guess I could have just described it as easier instead of getting into the, the Siegfried and Roy salt and pepper thing, but just a simple light switch for your main cabin lights. And in the bedroom, you'll see uh, the same thing. And that's normal, but this RV has in command. If you weren't aware that handy little switch was there, you might think that you had to uh, basically go flipping the switch every time you wanted the, uh, or touching the in command every time you wanted the lights off and on. Now up here in the bedroom, I talk about this all the time. I'm kind of okay with the fact that the living room door doesn't have a shade. Hey Cougar, are you listening? Please, if you're going to put one shade in the camper, put it in the bedroom or a bathroom door on your models so that the neighbors aren't watching us breathe while we sleep. It just, I don't, I don't know. Oh, by the way, this is a cool feature. Uh, your, let me open this up. So normally, if you want to like, uh, you know, pull the screen door or whatnot, a lot of people, they end up grabbing this or they'll rip it off just this handy little bar and it lets you pull the door shut which is i think cool i think that's a very cool little update feature that they have on these now quick note these are all 50 amp service so this vent up here if you want could be sacrificed for a, uh, a second air conditioner option that is available now remember we are looking at a 60 by 80 king bedroom up here you still have the normal uh, like full hanging closets but down below, you've got these handy little side stands that have household and USB outlets on both sides. They're both wired into that inverter. And again, if I'm going to just be ultra picky, I would like it if those were drawers instead of uh, really deep cubbies. But eh, that's, a, that's a little thing. I could slide a tote in there and make it work. Now, I think it's pretty obvious when that slide out closes, we're not exactly squeezing through there. The good news is we've got that second bedroom door to make this a little bit easier. Now remember, if you don't care for the second bedroom entry door, you can always just deadbolt it, but it is really the secret in the sauce for our, 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 our road mode traveling access here. Everything else that I think is really critical, you can get to back here from, I guess you call it like the main entry door. I almost fell backwards down the steps. So obviously we can get to our bathroom easily. The question then kind of becomes kitchen stuff. Well, the way that they have this set up, really, uh, I'd say about 99% of the storage is accessible. The only reason I don't say fully 100% of the storage is accessible is because these drawers, maybe they don't fully extend, but I think they open enough that it counts. But I mean, what's your take on that? Uh, I, I would prefer to be able to walk through it without having to go in and out, but in this floor plane, that's not possible, but at least we can still get to the bedroom if needed. And you know what's funny? It's just an eight foot wide camper, like most things. There's just something about that. It looks a little bigger, a little bulkier. That's a, that's a thick cougar right there. <laughs> and I happen to think personally, I do like the exterior, just sort of aesthetic on these. It, it, it always appeals to me personally. Um, now, a uh, couple things. There's some finer details on these Cougars, and Keystone's actually really been a driving force uh, from the engineering standpoint the last couple years. And uh, I don't know that they really get a lot of credit for some of the work they do. This is the silliest name, I think. It's, it's fun to say, but the Giggy Box. <laughs> the Giggy Box. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Anyway, so in its base form, it's a disconnect switch, a power disconnect switch. But 
the way that it operates, basically, there's no more like a, a big old mess of relays and stuff at the front of the trailer, and it completely stops all parasitic load off that battery. That's a big deal for the lifespan uh, of a battery system, you know. Now you see the magnet hold box, uh, backs, hold box, hold box. Yeah, hold, hold box. I don't know. Hold. <laughs> is that what you listen to? Uh, is that elevator music? Is it hold box? Anyway, not a great joke. I was reaching, but hey, you know what? You, you shoot for the stars, sometimes you still land on the moon. We're going to go check that stuff out on the other side. First of all, over here, this is the central nervous system of this RV. This is the brain. It's the in-command system. Uh, these are not fuses. These are like automotive style relays and also Keystone was the first and still one of the only towable manufacturers to totally color code all of their wiring and you don't have to be an electrical engineer to, to understand this stuff it just says okay this tank this color uh, this ground this color this motor this color it's just it's laid out plain as day for you right there um, the uh, uh, little black widget that we're looking at over here, uh, that is a side camera prep point, which I think is very cool. Oh, by the way, on in-command, let's say for whatever reason, you can't sync to it with your phone or somebody, your, 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 your drunken Uncle Gary breaks the touchscreen inside or something like that. There's a little dial right here where you can change to like motor one through five or whatever. And those would be like the power jacks, the uh, the awning, the slides. You still have a push button, like backup override before you have to do a manual override. Now I said power jacks. I don't want to confuse the issue. These are automatic uh, levelers. This is a full auto leveling, one touch push button, easy, convenient system on these. Uh, Cougar uh, has a couple different jack setups, but Every floor plan is made with only one like standard jack arrangement. So this is like the smallest you can get a Keystone Cougar trailer to get auto leveling. Anything smaller than this, it's physically too small to accept the system. And you, uh, what you'll get is power corner jacks instead, like on the 25 the, uh, and, the, and a couple of the 22 models. Um, now over here under the awning, notice how it clears both entry doors very nicely so that on a rainy day, you know, you can kind of come and go a little bit as you please. Over here by the front bedroom door, uh, kind of like off the kitchen, I suppose, you actually have outside TV hookups and a full shower over here. Plus, you'll see you have a full shower on the other side of the trailer. I think that kind of sort of works along with the little miniature camp kitchen over here. This is something Cougar stumbled into a couple years ago. Um, like every now and then, you know, I, I say a bunch of dumb things, but every now and then I say something that isn't completely uh, idiotic. Well, they were building a new entertainment center and they just sort of went, huh. You could put a mini fridge and a grill down there. And there you go. Their little mini camp kitchen that is used all over the place in their lineup was born. It's simple, but it's effective. And that's the kind of stuff I like. I, you don't always need something that is just like crazy expensive. Not, you know, it doesn't have to be flashy to be awesome and effective. Having that extra little dad's medicine cabinet outdoors, keeping the, uh, the, the, the barley water and, and that kind of thing uh, chilled, well, keeps me from tracking in and out of the camper all day. I'm all for that. That sounds good, especially if you got like bad knees or something. I swear. I tweaked my right knee years ago, uh, horse around with my daughter when she was younger, hyperextended it a little bit. It's never been right. I probably partially tore a meniscus or something. So I've been babying it by leaning on my left leg more ever since, which means that I'm probably destroying my left knee now. And Days like today where we get a bunch of campers in all at the same time and I'm up and down stairs. Uh, if I sit down for too long, it's like my left leg locks up and I'm sitting here thinking, you know, I should probably be concerned about that at some point and have that looked at. But, uh, you know, guys don't like to go to the hospital. Anyway, <laughs> over here, we got that slide awning. This specific RV in this specific video is actually custom ordered for one of our clients. Uh, we would not typically at Halo RV add the, the factory slide awning package on here standard, but we've been seeing more and more clients uh, like them. And that is something that we're, we're totally open to the idea of it. Like we do it on Rockwoods all the time because people always request it on Rockwoods. It's weird. We don't see the same uh, level of interest and request on a Cougar, but maybe that's changing. So let me ask you, it's, it's a couple hundred dollars. But is that an option you would like, or is that something you think we should leave to the realm of aftermarket? Appreciate your feedback on that. Little simple water docking station over here, by the way. This is that second outside shower. You see the uh, spigot in the upper left there. 
and uh, uh, that's that's where this guy is going to come in. It's still obviously new in the wrapper, but what's cool about it, it, it hooks into the camper there, and I don't know if you're seeing it well through the plastic, but it's got like a residential fitting end right there on it, so you can get any sort of little uh, sprayer handle. Now, we're gonna get up on the roof. You're going to see factory standard solar. There's uh, expanded solar packages, but no matter what, you also still have a simple side mount solar prep plug, so if you're parked in the shade, you can run the panel out in the sun, which is cool. Now, I said we'd get over here. Um, this is all kinds of crazy good news. So first of all, in the upper left corner, that's the controller for the uh, automatic leveling. Then, uh, the blue thing down below, that is a 15 amp Victron charge controller for the solar package that we're going to see on the roof. That is lithium friendly, by the way. Uh, and then, even this most basic Cougar, it's still inverter ready. That's actually uh, sort of a... Uh, Cougar helped kick off uh, something last year with their OTG package, off the grid. You know, you down with OTG, yeah, you know me. But being inverter ready, those yellow stickers that we saw on the outlets inside, that's something travel trailers just historically haven't had and didn't do well. But Cougar's really kind of kicked off the trend. And actually, Cougar did it. And then Jayco found out about it and went, hmm, I don't like Cougar having anything better than us. And suddenly, magically, all of the laminated Jayco RVs are also now inverter ready. It's just one of those keeping up with the Joneses kind of things, I suppose. Now, you can't really see much down here, which is a shame. Because a couple years ago, Keystone did some serious work on their climate package. And I can only verbally describe it for you, unfortunately. So long story short, yes, it's enclosed. There's a radiant barrier through the belly, up the nose, uh, across the roof, all over the place on this thing to, to help keep it a little more comfortable. But more than that, the underbelly is forced air heated and there are uh, forced air heat dumps directly onto all of the holding tanks. So each tank is forced air directly heated. Plus each tank has its own 12 volt holding tank heater and all of the water lines are run right along next to the heat line basically so that they're basically being somewhat passively heated by diffusion not to mention the entire cavity is being heated cougars they're tested down to zero i know clients that have done way more extreme weathers i just can't guarantee that for you so let's talk roofing. I've, I get up and down on all kinds of roofs, whether motorhomes, trailers, fifth wheels, all sorts of things. There's something they do. I don't know specifically, maybe it's the double vaulted roofing, maybe it's those double vaulted trusses. I don't know, a different kind of decking. I'm not sure what it is, but there's something about a Cougar travel trailer and Rockwoods are good for this too. They're like the most sturdy underfoot when I walk around up here. They feel the best when I'm up here. Now, something that you're seeing over here too is uh, the, the Solar Flex 200 system. Now, uh, recently here, every single Keystone RV now has some measure of factory solar on them. Uh, this is their most basic package. It's a 200 watt panel, has a 15 amp controller. You can add a second one of those. And what's cool is uh, a dealership like Halid RV, we can call Keystone, we can get the factory parts and we can do the upfit without voiding your factory warranty. That's something Keystone set up special that is not normal in the RV industry. Uh, this uh, RV also has larger packages available, the uh, 400 plus inverter and the 600 inverter plus lithium battery system that can actually, uh, has a soft star air and all kinds of things, hybrid uh, 3000 inverter that can run your air conditioner off just battery power. Understand that system still does not allow you to take this RV anywhere and camp indefinitely as much as you want. If you're going to make a stay over somewhere in a boondock situation before moving on to another destination without a generator, perhaps maybe that's a good option. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the Keystone Solar Flex packages, I will leave you a link in the video description where I've really given you a, a much more in-depth, detailed breakdown of those packages and not just what they have, but what you can expect from them. And if you're not really familiar with various solar packages, like I'll tell you, I'm, I still consider myself very much a novice on solar stuff. That's an entire career that you could spend learning about that kind of stuff. But to give you an idea, the kind of components they're using here, they did not go with the cheapest things that are out there. You talk to anybody who knows about solar components, they're gonna say, oh man, yeah, they're using the good controllers and everything. And what's awesome is it's a type of controller, it has a programmable load on it. Take a look at what I'm about to show you. Remember, this RV has no battery on it whatsoever, no power coming into it other than just the magic of the sun. So once again, no battery, no shore power. 
no generator, no nothing like that. But we come around the corner, and did you notice? We've got lighting going on out here. And just wait. I don't want to cut the video. I want to do this all in real time, so apologies if I'm moving a little quicker. But look at this as we walk in here. She's all lit up. Can you believe I did this whole video without ever so much as hooking a battery up to this RV? That's cool. And this is the most basic Keystone solar package gets. Now, obviously, the refrigerator's not running. But if this thing's just sitting there, you just need to hop in and get it packed up or something real quick. How cool is it that you, like, you don't even got to muck around with batteries or anything like that. This is awesome. So what do you think, guys? Obviously, I, I've made my opinion known. I, I like this one. Would you buy it? Would you camp in it? Um, and if it's not your kind of camper, do you at least respect it? Is there something you'd like to see different or any questions? And uh, if you're ever curious, I always leave you a link in the video description where you can check pricing and availability. Uh, or if we're sold out, you can at least check the last known MSRP without ever needing to pick up the phone. For anything more specific, we got a whole team inside here at Halet RV that can take care of you. At least you assume I'm pointing toward the building. I could be pointing to the dumpster. You don't even know. <laughs> I think it's time I go get hydrated and I get out of the sun. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet Camp and everyone. Mm -hmm.